Good morning Year 12, welcome to Changes, Changing Places 7. So today we're going to start on a very important local place or near place case study. Now you do have Woking but this one is in far more depth and a good comparison so let's get started. Now this is going to be quite note um, heavy so I suggest you open a Word document and sort of cut and paste the different data to build yourself a case study ready for this. So let's get started. Now Tuam was writing in 1977, said that place has a crucial experimental dimension. Sometimes it can be bound up with feelings of frustration, boredom or drudgery of life. Now <clears throat> I want you to consider that in your own place concept, uh, context. Sorry, How do you feel about your hometown and why do you feel that way? Is it topophobia, topophilia? Do you like Roald Dahl? And have you ever heard of Great Missenden? Well, we will certainly have had enough of it by the end of today's lesson, I'm sure. So this is our local or near place case study, as I, as I mentioned earlier. Now, the sort of hashtag is connected but not protected. Now, it, we'll talk more about that um, in a moment. But before, I just want you to have a look at this image of this house or this cafe twit and think about what kind of sense of place it conjures up for you. <clears throat> Now, what we're going to be looking at today is the idea of places being socially constructed, constructed and how both current and historical changes can have a huge impact. And this idea that past and present con connections will shape the place. So we need to think about how Great Missenden is actually connected to other places regionally, nationally and internationally. <clears throat> so let's get started with this case study. Gosh, it's such a beautiful location, isn't it? And look at its excellent um, geographical context. So just on the periphery of the rural urban fringe of London, so great connectivity into the world city, but it's actually found within an area of outstanding natural beauty and a protected area, but look how stunning it is. Now, Roald Dahl lived in the Chilterns for 40 years and he wrote all of his famous books inspired by this location and the topography and endogenous factors of the area. Um, so Matilda Wormwood, for instance, would toddle around to the local library whilst her mum was playing bingo in Aylesbury, which you can see on the map is a slightly larger town just outside of Great Missenden. And Sophie was plucked from her bed by the big friendly giant, the BFG, in the little house on the high street. <clears throat> Moving on with this sense of place and linking the fact that, um, you know, this historical connection is still shaping the place. This is um, in 2018, um, this uh, famous um, uh, statue or two famous statues were actually constructed of Matilda squaring up um, to Donald Trump. So again, it gives it this um, contemporary context here. Where is it? So you can um, see here, we're going to look in the location of Great Missenden um, in just a moment. But if you refer back to the map on the previous page, you can talk about the fact um, that it is northwest of London on the rural urban fringe. So today we're obviously going to describe the location, look at all these different sources and um, that have built uh, data sources, sorry, to see the character of Missenden and how it's changed over time. Now this is the exam question that we will address at the end. So the changing character of place over time is more effectively represented by statistics and cartographical sources than artistic sources. So we're going to address this question using Great Missenden. <clears throat> so I want us to create a place study. I said earlier to open a Word document in order to do this. Now we need to consider the endogenous and exogenous factors locally, nationally, globally that have actually um, given or shaped this town. So start with location. So I would like you in your notes, obviously you can use some of these maps, but to actually describe the location of Great Missenden, you know, including the fact that it is an ideal location on the rural urban fringe with great connectivity and transport arteries. So let's look at some photographic evidence of how Missenden has changed over time. So moving from a predominantly agricultural town setting to one that relies heavily on tourism and the service sector as seen <clears throat> in the images. 
Now, um, I want you to pause the video here and watch this short film of the making of Great Missenden and make some notes, obviously, on how you can visually see it changing over time. So let's look at some cartographical evidence. So this is 19, sorry, 1897. I want you to have a look at what features you can see of Great Missenden um, and its sort of endogenous factors at this point in time. I then want you obviously to uh, juxtapose that with 1946, so just slightly post World War II and how this area has changed. And then now, obviously looking at how it's grown in quite a linear fashion, but with some isolated settlements generally growing along obviously transport arteries. And then what we'll come back to is the proposal of HS2 running straight through this area of outstanding natural beauty. So take a street tour. So if you go onto Google Maps here and, and select <coughs> the little yellow person, you can actually walk yourself up and down the streets to get a real nice sense of place of this local study. So with our historical goggles, let's look back over in time and see how the population has changed through time. So you can see it has been um, consistent growth, but with some anomalies. Pause the video here and have a little read um, from Magna Britannia and read about the sort of rich history. And consider when you're reading this, is this actually helpful in gaining an insight into the lived experience of this area, looking historically at historical literature? Then there's art again. Um, have a look, both of these were painted in the 1900s. What kind of sense of place do they give you? It looks very idyllic, doesn't it? And then you've got one uh, painted circa 2010. So I'm going with your notes. We've looked at cartographical there, we've looked at artistic. And we're now going to look at just how well connected um, <clears throat> this area is. So we've mentioned just how close it is on the periphery of London. So great commuter belt village. So you can pause the video here and watch this short um, uh, interview with an insider um, about HS2 and the fears behind this development. And again, a little bit more information for you to read about with regards to HS2, because it is highly resisted by the local residents. A little bit of information for you to add to your case study here about the endogenous factors of the area. So why it is classed as an AONB, in an, out, no, an area of outstanding natural beauty. A little bit more information about the endogenous factors there and also the uh, demographic characteristics of the area. Uh, then we move on to some interviews with, um, with locals um, and some of the historical context there. Um, is the classed as a dormitory settlement. So this is um, a rural settlement, settlement sorry, that has increased in size uh, due to being close to a nearby um, urban area and people looking to um, conduct counter urbanisation, sort of escaping the main city. So um, I want us to think about now um, <clears throat> this census data. So Great Missenden is a ward within Chilton in the southeast of England. So on the next following slides, I've just put lots of demographic data for you to see if this helps you build up a picture of the lived experience due to the demographics. Now I've put the word posh, it's incredibly, comes across as a very affluent upper middle class area. And you can see on the um, graph down here just how it, uh, Chilton compares to this ward in particular. So this ward is a very comfortable, uh, wealthy aspirant area. Uh, very white British, economically active, very little diversity. Um, again, mostly heterosexual, mostly high earning professionals. You really get to start getting a picture of what it would be like to visit this area in relatively good health, considering as well. Most people are employed, high economic activity. Um, some people working from home, some people commuting. So you'd actually think they'd want the HS2, but they want the connection, but they don't want it to run through their location. Um, again, a little bit more information about home ownership, so you can tell a lot if there's lots of um, socially rented versus um, owned properties. Age distribution, so you can see there's many economically active, and you can compare that to obviously Buckinghamshire and England itself as a whole. Um, quite low immigration rates, but very high, well-educated people. 
um, and how the population is predicted to change in the future. So this is a very lucrative um, area and an area where lots of people want to move to because of its great connectivity to the big city. Very low crime. Um, as you can imagine, totes not deprived, darling. They're incredibly, incredibly um, well developed and not deprived at all. As you can see here from its overall ranking, almost the least deprived in the country. So again, having a look at the IMD, because there are still obviously pockets within the Chiltern area that are um, obviously more deprived than others, as to be expected. Uh, some environmental, so it's very leafy, green, spacious. Ah, so is this place perfect or what? So I think I want you to think about all the positive attributes that you take from this qualitative and quantitative data. So moving on, obviously, um, Great Missenden is renowned for being the, the home um, and of Rob Dahl, and he speaks with such great passion and topophobia, topophilia, pardon. Um, so I want you to think about this narrative connection that a lot of people will have with this small rural idyll because of this chap. So there's a short article for you to check out there, please. And then look at the media. Now, at the moment, there's absolute huge... Um, fierce opposition against HS2 because obviously expecting the government needs to spend the money more so in other areas which is obviously probably a good thing for the residents that have been protesting this changed forced upon them. TripAdvisor, hey we recognise that picture from the painting that we saw earlier, so TripAdvisor just gives us a sense of just total uh, topophilia here. Uh, the way they sell it is totally narrative connection for Roald Dahl, a bit like the Alice Trail. Tried really hard to look for bad things, but it's, you know, a little bit of thievery in the local, local shop. That's about as much as I could find. So I've mentioned most of the stuff on the textbook pages, um, but obviously you can have a little look and read through these here to build up your case study. Um, local people are really trying to stop the HS2 and you can see that through um, the song. Uh, it's a bit of a rock ballad that you can listen to here. Um, and I want you to buy Dirty Mavis, should I say. And I want you to think about how this song is trying to help um, the area resist this change. Again, moving on, we've got some insiders' views and protests of people trying to stop this HS2 affecting the lovely Roldal woods. Again, amidst the COVID-19, people still trying to fight for this to oppose, um, instead of spending the money on it, um, HS2 spend it on the NHS. Then the following slides give you a little bit of impact. So if the HS2 was to be built, what kind of economic impacts would it have on the area? And unsurprisingly, quite a lot of them are quite negative to this area for tourism. A little bit more information from the local community groups of how actually HS2 could potentially help the economy. And then a little bit of literature. So you've got two other, other than obviously we've got Roald Dahl already, so Matilda. And then you've got Flora Thompson, who also wrote about the area with quite a lot of topophilia. Some insider questionnaire responses here, so you get the, the, you know, from the horse's mouth. And then I've just done a summary of how this area has changed and or how it has been seen in the past and how it moves forward in the future. And this planning blight experience with HS2. Take this little quizlet, see how much of the case study you've taken in. Now exam question time. Now I've put this exam question in that you've planned before. This would be an ideal question. Um, to uh, sorry case study to, uh, to, to to put this question but this is the one we're actually going to um, address today so use your planning sheet guys deconstruct this question um, be really statistical when talking about your quantitative data and talk about your qualitative data as well so place place and sense of place do not lend themselves to scientific analysis for they are inextricably bound up with the hopes frustration and confusions of life so with reference to both qualitative and quantitative data, assess the extent to which you agree with this quote in determining past and present lived experience of a place. So basically, can we rely on qualitative and quantitative data 
um, to determine this lived experience because imagine the frustrations of people living in Great Missenden at the moment and hopes are that the HS2 does not run through their village. The mark scheme is on there for you to have a go at. Um, and then there's another question that you might wish to look at. I don't want you to plan it or anything like that, but um, I found an essay walkthrough on how someone might um, address a question like this, which again, Great Mistin would be a great case study for. Well done, guys.